Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Right behind me here, right there, is a Perco four position battery switch. I've had a lot of questions on these battery switches, not just the Perco, but any four position switch in general. So I'm gonna try to answer some of those questions and break it down a little bit better. We have a full video on how to install, but this is more about how this functions on your boat and to better explain some of those questions that I got a lot of from the last video. Let's dive in. This is that Perco four position switch. I do really like this one, it's easy to mount. In this case, we used a piece of uh, high density plastic to mount it to the rail. That way we have a nice backing on it where all of our power wires come in. But basically what we have is an off position. We can run battery one, which I've labeled battery one, that's my starting battery. And then I have battery two. Battery two is my house battery, this big 31 class deep cycle and all is going to be running these two batteries in parallel. So combining them essentially to give a longer lasting power, uh, but also will push charge into both batteries. So that, I think that's one of the biggest questions is, when would I use what? Off, obviously I leave the boat. I don't want any power trickling, draining, anything like that. It's in the off position. Battery one, I don't use this very often on my own boat. I don't really know a good reason why you'd only use battery one. Before I start my boat, I turn the switch to all. So what all does is puts one and two in parallel. The reason it can do that is because the grounds, there's a jumper across right here that connects the grounds of the two batteries. That's what allows us to run in parallel. That's what allows us to also push charge to both batteries. So keep that in mind. That's why we're in parallel now is because we've combined the grounds on these. Then you can kind of think about it as power going out from one or both to that switch because I have my lead in for one and two for power. We're not gonna get big into that. I explain that in the installation of a similar switch. But in this case, we're just talking about application here. So on all, I'm pulling power from both batteries. So I'm getting 12 volts uh, to my battery switch, which is going to get 12 volts to all of my accessories. So all those things that are coming off of the common in here, there's a few different wires. We have our starting power for the motor. We have a thick four gauge for our amplifier for the stereo. And then we have our accessory lead for my dash accessories, LEDs, nav lights, etc. What we're doing is pulling power from our batteries and supplying that to these commons out. So back to when I would use what? All, that's what I put mine on 99% of the time. If I'm running the motor, if I'm cruising the lake, doing laps, pulling tubes, whatever, I run it on all. Remember that's putting those two batteries in parallel. Another critical component, and I agree, I haven't done a ton of research on it, but I would not try to run a lithium and a standard lead acid or AGM, I wouldn't combine the two. These are both lead acid batteries, nothing crazy about it. They're just good quality decamarine batteries. So I wouldn't cross the two in terms of different types of batteries, different classes of batteries is fine as far as they are the same type of battery. So again, we have a 31 deep cycle and a 24 starting. That's fine to run these two in parallel. On setting two, so this is the other only other setting I personally use is setting two is going to change it to battery two only. So now I only have battery two's power coming in and being supplied to those common wires or those common powers going out. When would I use that? If I'm on anchor at the beach, somewhere else, that's when I would use that if the motor is not running because I want to make sure that my starting battery, battery one, I don't want to be contributing anything to the system, the amplifier, the lights or anything. I want to keep number one fresh. When it's time to leave the sandbar or on anchor, I'm heading home, I go back to all. That way, even if number two is dead, if I go back to all, now I get power pulled from my starting battery. And as I'm running across the lake, I'm at least gonna restore some charge to battery two. It's gonna take a long time to actually charge it back up, but if I don't sit all day, 
there's a chance that if I just run battery two for, you know, maybe an hour as I'm sitting there soaking up some sun, I can switch back to all, and it's gonna keep both batteries relatively topped off. That's how I run my switch. When I get back to the dock, it goes to off. I run my boat all season. We don't sit on anchor and jam out. We don't even have an amplifier on our boat, but I never have to charge my batteries. Season in, season out, they stay topped off using this system. So this is just a really simple voltmeter. It's gonna tell me how much voltage these batteries are putting out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and test each battery so we can have a starting point. This is at 12.7. This is at 12.7 as well. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn on all the accessories on the boat and we're gonna see how much draw is taken from each battery. So this will show you, this will explain when I'm on battery one, that only battery one is supplying draw. When I'm on battery two, only two is supplying draw. And then we'll see what it looks like when we're on all. Here we go. So battery one is supplying power to everything, including the stereo. I don't have the motor running, but that's okay. So we now, we've dropped to 12.5. When I check battery two, we're still at 12.7. If I switch to two, I test battery one again. We're right back up to 12.6, 12.7. Now we test battery two and we're right back down to 12.5. If I go to all, now we have the batteries in parallel. If I test each battery now, 12.5, 12.5. So that shows you when I have it set to battery one, only draws coming from battery one on battery two, only draws coming from battery two. And when they're shared, we have them both pulling power. That's how this switch works. I hope that explanation helped too, seeing the voltage drop when I have the battery set on a certain switch. The other big question I had is, how do I choose which battery is powering which items? That, with this switch, is impossible. So let me explain that further for you. No matter what position this is in, one, two, or all, I cannot control which battery is running to which accessory system. I can choose which battery is supplying power, but everything on the common post, my engine, my amplifier, my electrical accessories, I don't get to choose if battery one or two is supplying power to individual items. I can only choose which battery is supplying power to all of those items. So anything hooked to the switch, it's going to be powered by one, two, or all. If you want your dash panel, my accessories, this little wire here, if I want that to only come off of battery one, I have to hook it directly to battery one. However, then I don't get the control of turning my switch off or turning power to those off rather. It has to be on the switch to be off. So you'd have to put a second on off switch in if that's what you wanted to do. So once again, this controls which battery is supplying power to the switch and thus to all of the items hooked to the switch on the common or the shared post. I hope that makes sense. I don't get to pick if battery one is powering my amplifier, battery two is powering my starting or my ignition for my motor. I don't get to choose that. Anything hooked to the shared or common post is going to be supplied power by where I have this set. There's no way to dictate that other than to hook directly to said battery, whichever one you want to power that individual item. So there's a lot of talking. I hope this helps to break down. This is just a way for me to answer some questions for you on this type of switch. Thanks for watching.